Hi everyone, welcome again. Today we'll be talking about the energy module and in particular storing hydrocarbons safely. So last time we spoke about what are the properties of hydrocarbons and how do we use them and how do we explain them. So now we're going to talk about storing them based on the properties that we know. Okay. So this is what can happen when you don't store hydrocarbons safely and it's a legitimate concern for hydrogen powered cars because you have to store them under pressure and as soon as it's under pressure um, any sort of spark might cause a problem. That's not actually true but um, here is an example of when storing hydrocarbons goes badly. So what safety hazards are we concerned about? Um, there are many things depending on the different chemicals, different hydrocarbons. Um, each hydrocarbon has a different um, set of safety concerns. So for instance, benzene compounds are carcinogenic. Um, alkanes are very volatile and very flammable. Um, there are many things like that. So, but for the purposes of today's lesson, the main ones that we'll talk about are flammability. So that's a pretty typical one. Petrol, all these other hydrocarbons that you see are generally fuels for something. The volatility relates to the flammability, but the more volatile a substance is, the more dangerous it is to store. So for instance, Paraffin wax is quite flammable, but its volatility is very low. So candle wax is flammable, but because the volatility is so low, it's not a safety concern. And toxicity. So many of these compounds are very toxic, which is sort of self-explanatory. So most alkanes that we see are highly flammable. So remembering alkanes are just those straight chain or branched chain single bonded compounds. Um, with hydrogen and carbon, so only hydrogen, carbon, single bonds. And by highly flammable, what we mean is that the amount of energy to start the combustion process is very low. So the activation energy, so to speak, is very low compared to um, less flammable compounds. Now this makes them a storage hazard, mainly because any spark or small energy discharge, mostly just sparks, um, can cause large flames given the right conditions. So if we have a very volatile um, substance, maybe that's collected underneath a desk or something, and then a small spark from static, or you know, um, maybe just someone grazed some two pieces of metal together by accident, then we get a big fireball simply because um, there's a lot of fuel mixed with the air and it's got a very low activation energy. So volatility is the other concern related to flammability, and so those two kind of go hand in hand. Okay, so if you want a very, if you have a very dangerous compound, it's generally both flammable and volatile. But that may not be true um, for all dangerous chemicals. But generally, when we talk about hydrocarbons, that's what we're talking about. So volatility is the other main concern. Uh, it's great for combustion engines. So for our car engines, our plane engines, uh, anything where we burn to get motion, that's good. Volatility is great. It means that no energy is wasted evaporating it and it burns very completely. It mixes very well too with the air. So that's good for combustion engines. But it's not good for us um, when it's just sitting there in a container. So how do we define how volatile something is? We sort of use what's called the flash point. And the flash point is simply the lowest temperature at which a fuel will produce enough gas to combust. So by vapors I mean gas. So it's a temperature where there'll be enough gas in the system compared to the amount of liquid to cause a combustion reaction to happen given some kind of activation or spark. So typical petrol has a flash point of negative 43 degrees Celsius. So you can see it's very volatile and that's why when you go to a petrol station you can always smell the vapors because the flash point is so low. Okay and the volatility is very high. Now, volatility is high in many compounds, particularly alkanes, because of weak intermolecular bonds or dispersion forces. So very little energy is required to produce a combustible mixture in air. So little energy is required to get the, that petrol or that fuel into the air as a gas, have it mix enough so that you have a lot of air and fuel mixed together, and that's what we call a combustible mixture, when we have enough fuel and air to get combustion to happen. 
So what safety precautions can we take? So this um, diagram is just a nice little happy um, helmet and gloves. So these are generally just common sense um, issues. So use common sense when dealing with these chemicals because that's generally all you need. So obviously don't store volatile hydrocarbons near an open flame or heat source um, for obvious reasons. You don't want it to catch a light. Store in a cool or refrigerated space. So when you store them, keep them cold because that will reduce the volatility because less of it will become a gas because there's not enough energy. So we want to keep these hydrocarbons cool so we don't cause any sort of um, gaseous combustion mixtures. And store in darkened bottles to prevent exposure to ultraviolet light. So those darkened um, brownish bottles that you see in your lab sometimes are generally just to keep the ultraviolet light out. Okay, so this wraps up today's lesson on the safety, uh, storing hydrocarbons safely and why we have to store them safely. So you've seen what are the main concerns and generally the safety precautions. Again, common sense is king here. So we'll move on to the question segment and see if you can use the chemistry that you've learned to answer the questions. So explain why short chain alkanes need to be stored in cool or refrigerated areas. So these short chain alkanes are highly volatile. That's the first thing. But volatility decreases with temperature. So by placing them in a cool location, there is insufficient thermal energy to allow the alkane to become a gas. So because there's no energy available, they can't become a gas as easily. So you get less volatile mixture. If there is no alkane gas, then there is no risk of combustion as combustion only occurs when reactants are in gas phase. So remembering that I spoke about it can only happen in gas phase combustion. So if there's no gas, if there's no fuel gas, then you're not going to light air on fire if there's no fuel. So that's the main reason why we keep them refrigerated. So why are short chain alkanes more of a hazard to store than longer chain ones? Okay, so think about last lesson and the intermolecular forces at play here. So short chain alkanes have smaller dispersion forces as there are fewer electrons compared to the longer chain ones. So if you have a short chain like this, it has less electrons than a chain this big, okay? And protons as well. This means smaller dispersion forces. And so the smaller dispersion forces of the smaller molecule mean that it's more volatile because there are fewer bonds restricting its motion, okay? Now longer chain alkanes have bonds, have stronger bonds, meaning that they can be stored in liquid phase because they've got very strong bonds, they have lots of bonds holding each molecule together, so you, get, you can get a liquid. Therefore, little danger as there is no gas to combust. So because they're liquid phase, there's less gas. Less gas means not as much combustion, and so a very reduced risk compared to the smaller chain ones. Okay, so moving on to question eight. So define flashpoint and why is it Im an important quantity to know when handling alkanes, okay? So what is flashpoint, remember? Remember from one of the slides that I spoke about? Flashpoint is the lowest temperature at which a hydrocarbon can produce a combustible mixture in air. So it's the lowest temperature that we can store them. Uh, so it's the lowest temperature at which a hydrocarbon can produce a flame, essentially, if there's an energy source available. Now. If you store the thing low, if you store the hydrocarbon lower than that temperature, then it's not going to combust because there's not enough gas. So knowing the flashpoint is important as it tells us the temperatures we can safely handle the alkane at. So it essentially gives us the upper limit of the temperatures that we can store the alkane at. Okay. There we go. Okay. So that concludes today's lesson on storing alkanes and hydrocarbons safely. So we spoke about why um, we need to store them safely, and what forces and chemistry um, governs the processes that we need to store them. So I hope you've learned something useful about the properties of hydrocarbons in this series, and I look forward to seeing you at our next lesson. Mm -hmm.